Welcome back to the weekend show. You are now watching the lifestyle segment brought to you by Holo Crunch. Crunchy, yummy, goodness. Yay! I could use some popcorn right now, actually. You know, yeah, should. yeah. You know, I had this during the symposium. Oh, you did? Did I you like it? I like that they have different flavors. Exactly. I think I like the caramel. One. The ca that's my fave <laughs> <Really>? too. Yes. <laughs> See, we always starting with food. <laughs> always, always. There's something wrong with us. <laughs> On the lifestyle segment today, we'll be talking about the plights of internally displaced persons. According to international laws, internally displaced persons are people who have been forced to leave their homes due to natural or man-made disasters or any situation which can be categorized as a violation of human rights. The number of internally displaced persons in Nigeria is on the rise as Boko Haram, banditry, different sorts of insurgency uh, in all regions of the Nigeria continue to be perpetrated. So far, statistics indicate that there are over 2 million internally displaced persons in Nigeria. Despite this alarming figure, management of IDPs has remained a tough issue for past, past and present administrations. The rehabilitation and resettlement of IDPs in Nigeria, as well as provision of adequate security, food, shelter, has posed a big challenge despite claim to efforts of successive governments to have achieved this aim. On the lifestyle segment of today's show, we take a look at how after a decade of fleeing their land, survivors of insurgency who have now become internally displaced persons are still finding it difficult to resettle into society. Joining us on today's program to discuss this, we have... Liatu Ayuba, the woman leader um, of the Durmi IDP camp. Good morning and welcome to the weekend show. Good morning, sir. Also, we have Omar Gora. He is um, the public relations officer of the Durmi IDP camp. Welcome to the weekend show, sir. Good morning. let me start with you. You are a familiar face with the work that the Osasu Show Foundation has done with the IDP camp so far. Since the very beginning when we started in 2014, we've seen your face. You've remained there um, at the camp. What sort of changes have you seen so far and what are some of the efforts that the private sector as well as the government have embarked on to better the lives of those people um, such as yourselves living in the camp? Okay. Thank you very much, my daughter. May God bless you. Amen. And you too. May God add more experience to you. Amen. I'm very happy to come to study today because of the IDP camp. And you are the only one that you invite us today to, to explain our mind, to tell what is going on. I'm very appreciative. Um, from the beginning, since 2014, that we are suffering for our camp, you give some women's um, empowerment, you take some children to the school, and you are giving us food time to time. God, God bless you. Amen. Amen. Um, I, um, I'm the woman leader. Quite sure, Since 2012, I'm in the camp because of my son that is step on blast in the Borno state. Let me start for my own. This my son and even my husband, he died in active service. Not any help from any government. I suffer with these children. My son step on blast, not any help. I came to the hospital. It's missionary from United Kingdom. Are taking, they take care of my son. Good two years they are doing skin graft. Not any help from my own government. I came here. I'm the first person that I arrived in the camp because the agency started in the state before inter local government. So I'm the first person. I'm there before my people come and meet me. It was 2014, like you said it. To this time around, to be sincerely speaking, always AIT, NTA are coming and are asking us about government. To be sincerely speaking, um, they tell us that, first of all, they tell us that we, they don't know that IDP is in, the, uh, in Abuja. But I tell them that we have registered. Neymar know us, FEMA know us, and we have a commission of refugees. What are you telling me? And at the end, they tell us that we are going back to our uh, places, we say, okay, good and fine. But still yet, the Boko Haram issue is arriving in our, our, our places. And still yet, they are killing our people. Most of us that we see us here, we don't have fathers, we don't have mothers, we don't have children. All they lost it in the Boko Haram issue. But we are telling us we are going back. Okay, me, if I, 
like on my own, I told them that if I will go back to my state, you will give us the you will give us the security, more security, and arrange our houses so that if you go, we enter and give us the empowerment that we are going to start a, 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 a start a fresh life again. They say they will do that. They call us for a meeting. Nema, they say we are going back. They give us form. We feel form. We feel everything. We are waiting for them. Even they tell us that we should sell all the farming that we farm so that we are going back before December. This one, it was 2016 to 20, 2017. I could remember 23 November 2016. We sell everything at the end. We didn't see the money. We didn't see they take us back to home. We are still here. And this all years that we are going to nine years to 10 years, some eight years, some five years, because we didn't come together. We come one by one. All this, of all these years, me for my own, is worse. The time that is uh, Sadia Umar Farouk, she's the Commission of Refugees. She helped us with food. She helped us with the skill accusation for our hands. We have skill accusation, accusations. Some of the women that are doing it now, apart from that, we never ever see any help that come from government, except NGOs and the organization, the, the Christian and the Muslim organization, the schools like you, Asasu. We take some of our children and they are in the school. Like uh, individual people, those are the ones that I keep ad are bringing help to us. But they are trying to say we should go back. We say yes, we go back. But we arrange everything. If we arrange everything, we are going back. Not any feedback. Not anything. Like these two years, we suffer in the camp. Maybe it's more thing. The people are coming and uh, interview us. We are saying different, different types of n our needs. And even me, I'm begging, I say to, we are, how many years now? We are going to six to seven years, eight, we are here. If government can assist us and give us the, the powerful empowerment, we are useless women. Because all the sufferance in the camp is a woman. The husband, sometimes they will go out and leave you with children, nothing concerns them. You, you are going to suffer with your children. Give us the empowerment, because we have some women that have, they are the organiza organization that they teach us many skills so that we are starting doing it. Before we know we come out in this camp, we, it will be after. So, but no one. It's just some indiv individual people. They are coming giving us 20,000, 30,000. To be sincerely speaking, like me, I get eight children. Nine with me. I'm a widow. They give me 20,000. I say a big thank you to them. But I'm talking to for na good Nigerian people. Let them hear this story. Give me 20,000. And I get three children that are lying down, are sick. And you give me 20,000 and go and start the Akara. I cannot go start Akara with that 20,000. I will just carry my children go hospital. Because they are suffering from sickness. At the end, the person will come back. I say, what is your gain? What is your gain in the money that you give me? I say to my dear, you give me this money, my children are lying down. I spend it. Before you know this, I should, give, I should not give you again because you didn't work with that 20,000. So imagine this 20,000. I want to do the business and my children is lying down. I cannot go to the business. I will treat my children with this 20,000. But in fact, if you give me 50 or 100, I will treat my children. I will go and buy my equipment that I'm going to start the business and I will do it. So this is my request from government. Let them look after this one, unless they, 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 unless they take, if they take us to their home, give us a good security. Even yesterday, yesterday I get my brother in my, in my home. I call him. He said, don't call me. Don't call me sister. Don't call me this night. Don't call me. I said, what is going on? He said, Boko Haram, into our place. I said, ah. They said they, they bring everything, they surrender. What is going on? He said, ha. Yesterday they killed some people in the farm. Uh -uh. This, this morning, me and him talk. They tell me that, he tell me that, they say, we should leave everything that we farm so that we would harvest it. So now, I don't know where we are. I don't know where are we going. In our, this FCT is my home. It's my home. I'm a Nigerian people. It's my home. But they're telling me that no IDP in Abuja. And my place is not safe where I'm, I'm going. And still yet, our children are not in the school. The school that we are trying, we are teaching our children, corpus are helping us 
we don't know that if they finish if they, they finish secondary school in our camp, they will not get stressed yet because they tell us that the, those NYS in Adem tell us that because this school is not registered in the government school. See my PRO, we go FEMA, we go NEMA, we go commission, we tell them about the school, let them register this school so that coppers are helping us. They are doing volunteer work to teach our teenager, children, not feedback. The ones that they took 10, 20, 15, they are taking them to the government school. Still yet, now see the complaint. The mothers are complaining that in the morning like this, children want to eat something before go school. Nothing will nothing, nothing to eat before go school. If you force them to go school, they will go hide themselves for one river like this. They go get bad, bad, bad friends. All the children now. Children in the camp, 18 years, 20 years, 15 years, all they are taking drugs, they are on drugs abuse. What is this? I don't know. And every day I'm crying for that. Let them look after these IDPs. We are a human being and we are in Nigeria. One person can take care of the IDPs for uh, my own IDPs. One person in this Nigeria can take another IDPs to help us. But we are still begging, begging, begging. How many years now? Like me, I'm tired with the begging. If I will get a special empowerment, I will just go my own rent house, do my business so that I will stop him begging because we are going to eight years now. As we are not going back, let them find place and keep us. And they promise us. They say they will find one place and gather us for this cafe. We are waiting. Still yet. The commission gone. There are the, another commission that came. Yesterday we do meeting with her. She's a woman. I explained everything to her. She said she will try and she will give more import, more empowerment to our people. Her name is Imam Suleiman. This is our new commission. I'm happy with her. She talked much. She talked a very fine things to our all the women who lead us in the camp. We gathered yesterday. We go meet her. We explain all our problems. So now we are waiting for her. We are waiting for her feedback. May Almighty God touch her life. Let her change this life for the IDP camps. Liet, um, first of all, sorry about your loss and how the insurgency has affected your family. I can't even begin to imagine what it is like to be displaced for close to 10 years. And um, that's why we try to use our platform to amplify your voice. And um, we do hope the Honorable Minister and her team can hear this and the Refugee Commission. Um, and talking about the IDP camp, Durumi is in the center of Abuja, which is the federal capital territory. And so it begs to question um, how people in other states and other IDP camps are faring. And so, Omar, I just want to also hear your story and how are the people faring day to day in the camps as opposed to just Christmas, Valentine, and the few Easter breaks where people come and do donations? How do you people survive on those non ceremonial days in the camp? Good morning, once again. Um, my sister here, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> because today, at least privileged Nigeria today, I think in life living, we have less privilege, but I strongly believe IDP are the lesser privilege. Our rights have been, you know, taken away by Boko Haram, the little one, I think, the government of today and still step her leg on it. I don't know what to say. As Mama started earlier, you are an ambassador of humanity. You have intervened in the life of so many of our IDP members in Abuja. We have 17 come in Abuja. Coming, I think, from the day one, coming to Abuja, you know, people keep asking how come from that faraway land that we found ourselves in Abuja here as an IDP. I think uh, before the insurgency began, we normally come to Abuja for pedal for business, others are doing Jushena, some are, you know, some are doing bricklayer work, everything. But most of us, we farm beans, granite at village, we buy motorcycle. There is some particular family that you find four, five, even ten youths in their family. So ten youths in their family, or five, or four, or two. 
to uh, they are all comfortable because why I say they are comfortable if you get motorcycle if I come Abuja here I'll maybe work for three or four months me going back to rest the other person my brother will come and take over I will now go back to the village after four months too I will, will communicate ourselves okay tell him oh, I'm coming so 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 day so the day I will arrive in Abuja next day the is leaving I will take care, take over the bike so that's how most of us were coming to Abuja Patakot and other part of the country so 2014 I think uh, Boko Haram take over our city I think uh, 5th of August I think 2014 five or a week after Salah while we are still celebrating Salah they came in around 5 p.m. when they came in around 5 p.m. they start attacking security police soldiers they don't have they even they can even push you say give us road they don't have business with you when they overcome the security they not turn on the youth and probably these people are our brothers we know them we know them i think nobody will say that for some not is who will say that part of his family are not involved in this it's a lie and then you must lose this or who and that and when they three days when they overcome the security they now started with the youths going house to house joining them you join them by force or they shot at you take gun let's go and do god work Allah. and i strongly believe the two books whether the bible or the quran do not come with that do not give power to force somebody to go with your own you understand so we don't have anything to do despite the way the nation it is so and luckily god be the glory and after the third day after they finished with the army the third day of getting the more used to join them some heat in the ceiling some will enter even pit you understand some will hide under the bed some will climb tree by then they are not aware and when the thing is getting too much and most of the youth that run to the mountain few youth went run to the mountain and luckily god brought a ring that rain spot almost 48 hours heavy rain falling it's true that rain most of our youth out of 100 percent 80 to 85 to do that ring in the night escape to the mountain and we are thinking that is something maybe two three days it will end we have seen said okay they have come to stay because more are still coming in from some east from desert as we are on the mountain we can see them like 30 kilometers ahead you will see them coming with motor three in one three in one they are they get so many they get jeep they get hillocks i don't know where they take over the security vans you see police on you see soldier on you understand so one week hungry are affecting youth on the mountain and before the women normally cook these women that who are close to the mountain they normally cook and go and dump the food before the edge of the mountain every night so most of us get used in the night around 10 10 30 people will come and pack food go up it will seem like when they now see okay what is making these people this use they don't want to go so they are not being touched by hungry they must find out and they use their own number six to find out how come i think they put their security like several and when they now find out say okay women are coming to dump food the, the people that they caught dumping the food they wipe them away they now put like checkpoint before the edge of the mountain so we have to be frustrated to leave that mountain some trek we trek from that place to madagali with lake so if you want to find out you know when we are running you can run even a hundred kilometer but after getting to the particular where there is no you see you fell down you can't even move that leg again all the legs have swelled up from there some even try to move you would like also there is no transportation and for you being a young person know any effort on your body telling so begging somebody will not look at you what is wrong with this guy people will not even look at your eye because nothing is wrong with you how are you begging why are you begging they will not even look at your face because they will think that maybe what is happening maybe you are addicted to drugs or others maybe you understand so Luckily by then, Asabe Vlita, she was a commissioner in Borno and the former deputy governor, Dibal Mehi, rest in peace. When they see the thing is too much and we camp in Mubi, the king, they are welcome people, they now order, they should forget all the school. 
the vacate all the school within Mobi so that people can get and luckily going to that place is when I believe people have good heart. It's when something happened to you, you not get to know that whether people love you, they didn't love you. People are rushing in, gary, mad. Some are going to market to buy 10 mattress, a family, you know, some food item, pot, bucket, you understand? So many things. And one month, two months, so they're now implemented of a uh, Gora, that civilian JTF, because that civilian JTF is implemented by community people who should implement something Gora before government intervene in it and call them civilian JTF. So when they find up any community that have youth who implemented themselves on that civilian jet, if they go, they will wipe up the roof. Any 40 below, you are gone. Unless you join them, you will be killed. So that makes people afraid. And they now serve the king later. They send some of their people secret. I meet the king of Mobi say, okay, these people who carry stick, carry much at one to kill us, you give them shelter. Why, whether you tell them to go or attack your city? And the king how to move with his leg and the GOC of that barrack for Mobi that very day going to every school then people say you don't want them here, you don't want trouble. You understand? And luckily when this information comes out, Sasabe here that and the deputy governor Dibal, they now go into Mobi anywhere you want to go, whether Patakot, Abuja, Lagos, see boss. If you are going to look, okay, these are Lagos people, enter, everybody will be giving four thousand naira for feeding on the way. If you go there, I would strongly believe God will be on your side. Or you people, as soon as you arrive, you anywhere destination you arrive, try and look off the head of that area as a community, you understand, leader. I think I strongly believe you'll find your way. So that's how most youths live to Patako through that very woman and the deputy governor. Arriving in Abuja, because when we are used to Abuja as well, we don't normally come to Abuja for hustling. Um, when people see us, you know, there is no house under, people are sleeping under, cashew, and some churches around us, some of people hang, because we have so many churches at area one, because by then that area one area called church village. Mm -hmm. So I strongly believe these people, I think from the day one, they were kept there because of us, because they intervened, especially Paul, Pastor Paul and Nietzsche, living faith and other churches around us, gospel light and others. You understand? Our people are normally spending the under cashew, under tree, and people who normally use that access because of ghost law. Some people don't want to follow Apo or that area, one stadium site. There is a trespass road which you can follow to avoid the ghost law, at least to minimize the ghost law so that it will move faster. And people now, the next thing, they reported it to security, I think. I think one day military men came in i think they would reach like 500 in the night should be around 12 40 something struck one they started packing people if you are running they will shoot at you so many people bullet caught them so many people break leg they even three kill of our three of our brothers till death we don't know where their corpse is so after packing we i think they pack you our use 360 something in the morning the remaining they didn't touch women was the only way that escaped. One day break, we now come and meet the remaining, the rest of the people that escaped, we now get ourselves together and our women. What can we do now? We now march. Even that day, I think media was even aware, they follow us to the, our senator's house. What is the problem? We now came out. What is the problem? Say, this is the problem. You say, okay, to, to. We have to do by it like, if some who should go to media houses, why me, I will try my own in the office. And truly, Ordinary Ahmed Isa intervened, barricaded family, who reach out to him, and we also reach out to the securities, to the military. And before you know, we don't know whether it's through Ndume or through the ordinary Ahmed Isa, they were bought in the night. Around, I think it should be around 8 or 9 p.m., you understand? They were dumb on the express by Area 3 because they are afraid they don't want to reach Area 1 again. They dumb them on the road. Our uh, youth and I came in. When I find out, stop asking people one after the other, any person remain, no. It's upset this one, they are dead. And when they left, that cops are there. They still come back around 9 a.m. in the morning, they pick three cops and go. Go reach out to human rights. And from there, we suffered demolition like twice. 
They say uh, this we they don't know was no place for IDP. There is no come here. And luckily, I was part of bring back our girl moving. Also, basically, I explained to her. We rob our mind. She said, "Okay, to let's invite media. They invite media. She they visited that place too. Attend start advocating for the IDP about the bring back our girl issue. And then they say, now nah, as far as one case. So from there, people keep crying out." good Nigerian intervene in some group of lawyers, churches, others who come with, okay, if this is for our bad people, we are willing to acknowledge because they are close to us. We have went there, we have sent people secretly to find out why are they here. We find out they are Boko Haram victim. So that's why we allow them. That's how we get ourselves. We no longer suffer from demolition. But that three cops remain silent is with the military till tomorrow. And in life living in Abuja here, from the day one, were being helped by church and you know whatever you're doing today tomorrow you get exhausted not that you are gaining mm -hmm. you are s the one you keep you are spending for others you understand i strongly believe in lifestyle when we are living in that camp before now we get to know because we spend about almost two years before we get to know there is something called refugee commission we are living in that place for two years we don't know that it's such thing like that. And only if we to find out is um, is there for twenty seven years. I keep asking, these two years that we are suffering, nowhere to sleep, where are these people? Where they're just coming now. So nevertheless we don't want to ask questions. They are welcome. They bring food, they bring some doctors and people start coming truly from that twenty ten I think stroke now. Every coppers they are serving in Abuja, I don't know what to tell them, because I strongly believe they are sent to Abuja to serve humanity and to serve the IDP. Because out of 100% today, 70 to 75% structures that we have in the camp were built by coppers. And what I was surprised, they are not working. So we keep asking our question. Okay, what of others who are director, pamphlet, ministers, who are Abuja senators, House of Rep members, tough government officials? No one has ever come to this camp. Which all the structures were put in the camp. I strongly believe one person can put that and his pocket will not shake. Why these people? They are also our brothers. They are also less privileged because they are doing their own primary assignment when it comes to education. I say, okay, we don't know anything. It's only prayer that we offer them. So along the line, Federal Commission, where they came first, they now still come at the second time, when Sadia Umar Farouk take over. Now say, okay, that means we're okay. Now everybody was happy, thinking that the day she come, it will continue. Because, you know, one thing, government, I don't know whether the fall is from her, when she was a commissioner, I strongly believe, too, she have somebody that she report to. That's why we will lay the complaint. I think she will take it somewhere. I think she will do her own part, too. Maybe reporting it, I think she have done her own part. So along the line, suffering, because people are tripping in from the day one. Along the line, one year, two year, people now, the thing is going down gradually from 100% to 70, from 70 to 50, from 50 to 30. You now even get to 5% intervention now. How, about how many people do you have in the camp? Presently now, 2,830. Mm. And when we see the thing is, we keep writing letter to the FEMA, to the Federal Commission, so presently, one the creation of Office of the Humanitarian, as Sadiana emerged as the Minister of Humanitarian, we think that our problem is off. We don't know that we are embarking on another different assignment because totally, especially this coming of COVID-19, now seem like we are the one that brought the COVID to earth. People restricted from going to camp totally. Few people who believe in themselves, believe in Creator, they normally come, they will dump something, they will, they will tell you, say, stop there. They will dump it here, they say, okay, bye bye, we have gone. They don't want to, because they will come, they will tell you to stop this time, you understand? After this, they are flooded, they go their way. And no movement, that no movement, lockdown affected the IDB. We lost so many people during lockdown because of hunger. So many people. Mm. So many people. And the God be the glory, you have not come the time of cashew, that is cashew, that is mango. Most of our women normally go to Kashu and spend two hours a day. And luckily, and some people come from East and other China, some China people say, okay, this seat is money. We should plot 
from day one, somebody comes and say, okay, we'll buy the back of this thing, 5,000 Naira. Along the line, one people find us, oh, where do you get this? No, it's somewhere, it's very far. And you know, when you bring something to the market, somebody will keep finding us, oh, where do you get this thing from? At least they will go there and get it too. From there, the money keep increasing to 30,000 Naira per bag. Mm. That thing helped a lot during COVID-19, that cash will not. It helped a lot. And even though it's 10 Naira at the market, somebody will come to come and say, to, he will buy it for 30 Naira. I strongly believe he's doing that to support, but he's not buying it to go and make it. I strongly believe. So many people, there's things that will make as our make, like maybe soap and other things. People buy it. You know, somebody, okay, something of 200, something will say, take down to 1,000. Take change, okay, no, keep the change. And that thing helped a lot. So presently, and along the line, one week or two weeks today, we have information that uh, they want to turn IDP back home. I think that is new form of Boko Haram coming up now in notice. Some of our people are communicating to our people and we normally go home and visit home, come back. Now they are out now. They tell people before people should go and farm, they don't have business with them. Now when things are getting ready at farm to harvest now, they are chasing people out of the farm. But they are not killing now. Uh, so far, I think one month now, they just killed one person, which we know. Mm. But they are chasing people out of farm now because they want to take over the what we farm. They are chasing people out of farm. Okay, tell me, somebody spent complaining here farming in the farm. Boko Arana just come here, they say, okay, Kai, leave, don't come here tomorrow. If you want your life, don't come back here. Just go, leave this into us. So, I don't know. Uh, some say they are surrendering, which another new form of group are coming on with their own style, you understand? So, I don't know where we are heading to. And they are saying, okay, we should get it, maybe going back, try and maybe sending media to come and find out our mind. From the grassroots, okay, what are, what is in our mind going home and others? Why even Abuja here there are no security, talk less of the village. Mm. Because why I would say there is no security here. I think Boko uh, Amirobas attack Kuchigoro. I think I strongly believe if you go there, you find it, media go there, find it, they will find out the people who were killed there. But I don't can't, can't mention the name of the people who are dead because I strongly believe about Amirobas attack there, they come. Even we twice. You understand? We have to migrate some of our people who are back at the back under the cashew to come. Oh yeah, you people should leave this place. Because some group of men come with AK-47 in the night, collect their phone, where they see their file shoe, fine watch, phone, they collected everything. Go twice. You know, Andy made a very important point earlier on, and that is, if those of you who are in Abuja, the federal capital territory, are facing these issues, you are unable to feed, you are unable to provide health care for your children, despite the goodwill from foundations, civil societies, etc. I can only imagine, we can only imagine what people across the entire nation in other remote areas are facing. And as you said, the government is asking you to go back home, but they've not provided the adequate security in order for you to go home and have your lives and properties secured. So it doesn't make any sense. You know, so for people who are watching, I know you talked earlier about what people can do. You know, the little handouts, it, it goes some way, but it doesn't go a long way. Mm -hmm. The government needs to step up, that is for sure. It's something that we keep on repeating on this program, accountability for governance. We have over 2 million, well over 2 million displaced persons. If in your camp alone, one single camp in Abuja, there are over 2,000 IDPs, you can imagine how many more, um, how much that statistics has increased over time. So I'm just wondering, because it's one thing for us to, you know, sympathize here and feel so bad, but at the same time, it's like, what else can we do? You know, we've talked about what my foundation has done before we're sending children to school, giving you uh, startup capital to begin small to medium scale businesses, food and all of that, but it doesn't seem enough. You know, what else can we do knowing that we're not the government? You know, and we don't have the power to secure your lives and properties. So for people who are watching, I'll give you the final word in just one minute. What else can they do to help? Um, my, my request to help here is that as our place is not secure, like, like we women now, if to say we get a good empowerment, we could get a good empowerment because we have the skills. We have many skills in our hand that we are going to do it so that we get some money and help our children, help ourselves. If to say we get a, a empowerment, more empowerment, we start doing the business. Like before I'm a businesswoman, I get restaurants. 
some some of our women yes they get it and i'm buying goods go lagos go cotono buy uh, the one that we don't have it from cotono come back to my state and selling it okay i don't have any problem uh -huh. okay so empowerment all right how about you mm, i think uh, basically not is citizen especially a not an out of 100 percent i think 80 to 85 depend on family we go to school not to look for government job. It's how to communicate in society. I think if, especially like Abuja-based IDP, part of my people are in Nasarawa, a particular church from Italy beat a space for them. They buy 32 hectares for them, beat school, beat mocks, beat church, football field, view center, medical center. They buy them one open hillocks, one bus, 10 motorcycles, give them two tractors, beat store for them to keep their whatever they farm. I think what we need is government should maybe like us with Nasara government and find somewhere and create so that we open new Goza. We have another Goza there. We want to get another Goza here in Nasarawa state. You understand? Open a land, find somewhere, maybe settle down with government of Nasarawa. The only thing we need, I think we just need security, health center, school for our children, access road to our village where we'll be created and keep there and the first year what we are farming we want government to provide everything maybe give us structure and other camp and other necessary things for farming i think we are okay all right that's, that's the fine. only thing we need from the government we are calling on this every day yeah. and nothing has been done and we have meeting at like uh, twice with mr president idp community committee we have meeting twice with him the promise he promised it tomorrow we are still waiting for it. Maybe it will come maybe 2013. <laughs> That's a fine <laughs> place to leave it. Thank you so much for sharing your stories with us. The requests you have made on this program are not absurd. They are not, you know... Uh, they're reasonable. They're very reasonable, you know, requests. Because if you think about it, displacement can happen to any one of us. Um, insecurity is, has left just the you know northeast is now in the northwest is now in the north central yes. the southeast the southwest the entire mm. south south everywhere is going to, is plagued by insecurity at this moment so insecurity is not um, um, uh, you know strat is not for only one class of people and is not for only one geopolitical zone so this can happen to everybody mm. so for those who are watching please do what you can to reach out to intending displaced persons near you uh, they are all over the entire nation they're in abuja they're as i said across the six year political zones so please do what you can as responsive um uh, citizens we'll take a short break right now when we return there'll be more on the weekend show